Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Missy Beavers? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll start with the background of this case, including the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Terry Beavers was born on August 9, 1970. She went by the name Missy. She was raised in Texas. She graduated from high school and college, then went to work as a teacher. She married a man named Brandon Beavers. The couple had three children. Missy took a job as a fitness instructor for a company called Camp Gladiator. She would teach classes at various locations. On April 18, 2016, 45-year-old Missy Beavers was scheduled to run a class at the Creekside Church of Christ in Midlothian, Texas. Prior to Missy's arrival at the church, surveillance cameras captured a burglar inside the church. The burglar arrived at 3.50 a.m. and broke in through a side door at the church. They were carrying a hammer and possibly in possession of a pry bar. Missy arrived at 4.16 a.m. and parked her car in the church parking lot. She entered the building at 4.20 a.m. to prepare for the morning fitness class. At 4.35 a.m., the first student arrived at the church. They waited in their vehicle. At 5 a.m., students discovered Missy unresponsive and notified the authorities. The fire department arrived in seven minutes. The police arrived in 10 minutes. Missy had a head injury and multiple puncture wounds to her chest. The wounds were consistent with the objects the burglar was carrying. Missy died shortly after the paramedics arrived. No arrests have been made in this case. Now moving to my analysis. The individual captured burglarizing the church, of course, is a suspect in this case. At the time making this video, they have not been identified. In the surveillance video, the individual is recorded inside the building the cameras on the outside were non-functional. It's not clear if the church's burglar alarm was malfunctioning or they didn't have one. It appears unusual that there'd be cameras both inside and outside a building, but not a burglar alarm. As far as I can tell, the police were notified by the students who arrived that morning and not by any type of automated system at the church. They responded when Missy's students called them. So the burglar was in there walking around and no signals were being sent. They were being recorded, but that was it. The suspect can be seen walking around swinging a hammer. They were opening doors and breaking through doors. Broken glass was found inside the church. This is one of the ways the police figured out where the burglar had been, other than them being captured on a camera. The burglar made entry into several different rooms. The individual is somewhere between five foot two and five foot seven. It's not clear if they are male or female. The person was wearing a helmet, black balaclava, dark pants, dark long sleeve shirt, black gloves, and a black vest with the word police on it in white letters. It appears as though they were trying to impersonate an officer in riot gear. The police determined that the gear was not authentic. It probably didn't come from a police department. More likely it was some type of Halloween costume. The burglar had a distinctive gait. Their feet were turned out from their body. This was more evident on the right foot. Nothing was taken from the church or from Missy. She was still wearing her wedding ring and her phone was left behind. The church had money in it that the burglar did not even attempt to take. The police have not released all the evidence in this case. It's not clear how much video they are holding on to, like if there are other recorded segments that were not released. The police did indicate that Missy can be seen entering the building and walking toward the suspect's location. Neither the victim nor the suspect was seen on the video. So even the video that the police have, the complete video, they don't see the confrontation. Not too far from the church, a vehicle was captured on surveillance video that the police are interested in. It is a 2010 to 2012 Nissan Altima or Infiniti G37. It was spotted driving slowly around the parking lot of nearby businesses around 2 a.m. The headlights were being turned on and off. This could be related to the case, and I can understand why they want to find this vehicle, but it kind of seems like a stretch considering this crime occurred about two hours later. 
The police explored all the usual angles for a murder like this. Missy's husband, Brandon, was in the state of Mississippi on a fishing trip on the day of the murder. The police verified his alibi. He told the police that everything in his marriage was good. They were a happy couple. Investigators found that this was not true. It appeared as though the couple was having financial problems and Missy was having an affair. Brandon's father went to a dry cleaner on April 22 and asked if they could clean a shirt in his possession. It was a woman's shirt with blood on it. He said the blood was on the shirt due to breaking up a fight between dogs. The employee called the police because they had heard about the Missy Beavers case. The police seized the shirt and analyzed it. It appeared as though someone had tried to clean the blood off already. As it turns out, the blood was from a dog, and Brandon's sister corroborated her father's story. When the police were talking to Brandon's father, his name was Randy, the media was there recording Randy walking in the police station. People noticed that he walked in a similar way as the person featured in the surveillance video. As it turns out, Brandon's father, Randy, also had an alibi that involved being out of state. He was in California. So the police ruled out Brandon and Randy. At 4.30 a.m. on the day of the murder, a dark SUV was seen leaving the church parking lot. The lead brought the police to a man named Bobby Wayne Henry. He owned a vehicle matching that description and walked with a limp. He used to be a Lancaster police officer and owned riot gear. He said that it didn't fit him anymore. He was fired after being charged with an assault of a sexual nature in 1996. In 2019, when the police spoke to him, he was a licensed security guard. He had worked at Missy Beaver's funeral and attended her service. He was arrested after police discovered explicit images on his electronic devices. He spent some time in jail, but he was never charged with any crime, even ones related to the explicit images. As it turns out, Bobby Wayne Henry was six foot one, so taller than the suspected murderer, and had an alibi for the time of the murder. The key question in this case is this. Was this a chance encounter or was Missy Beavers targeted? As I mentioned, there was evidence that Missy was having an affair, which always increases the risk of being a murder victim. Three days prior to the murder, Missy told a friend about creepy and strange LinkedIn messages from an individual that she did not know. The friend didn't know the person either. Before I analyze the two main theories of this case, I want to point out a few curious and interesting items that I think could be important. First item, I think the killer was familiar with the building. Not many buildings have cameras inside, but no working burglar alarm. I think one reason the suspect was calm was because they knew they would not be surprised by actual police. Again, they were dressed up as a police officer, but it's not believed they were a police officer. The second item, Missy's schedule was functionally public considering her social media posts. Anybody could have found out that she was going to be there, but would they have known that she was going to enter alone? Could they be sure of that? Perhaps the killer was someone familiar with Missy's workday routine, like they had been to her classes or otherwise knew that she walked into the buildings alone. Third item, the suspect may not have been the only killer. Rather, they were only there to act as a decoy to get the police focused on one particular set of characteristics. Perhaps they were trying to frame somebody who was about the same height and had a limp, like Missy's father-in-law, Randy. The real killer may have stayed away from the cameras and been in much better physical condition. Let's take a look at the two main theories in this case. The first theory is that Missy was targeted. There's quite a bit of evidence to support this theory. The suspect did not appear to be acting with any sense of urgency. They were kind of walking around, looking in rooms and breaking doors, not exerting a lot of energy, almost like they were just waiting around. They didn't steal anything from the church or from Missy. If the suspect was just a regular burglar who was surprised by Missy, what were they doing? Why were they there? Why didn't they start stealing things in the time they had? If the suspect was a youthful offender, like a kid just acting impulsively, why were they walking with a limp? Certainly a young person could have sustained an injury or otherwise had a limp, but statistically that's unlikely. The purpose behind the person's behavior could be interpreted as a suspect looking for the room that Missy was going to be in, trying to set up a lying-in-wait 
situation. So they wanted to surprise her. They wanted to get the advantage and catch her just as she was walking into the room. The individual could have masked their identity without the ridiculous discount riot gear costume. It's like their inspiration was the exorcist meets Paul Blart mall cop. They may have specifically wanted to appear that way, not just the apparel selection, but the gait, almost like they're trying to set up Missy's father-in-law, as I mentioned. What are the chances that an individual wearing an unusual costume would just happen to arrive at the church right before Missy, kill only her, and commit no other serious crimes, and then leave? If Missy was not targeted, why didn't the suspect flee? Certainly, they would have heard Missy entering the building, or at least walking down the hallway toward them. Not many burglars would be willing to upgrade from burglary to murder. If Missy cornered them, they could have threatened her with the hammer, they could have conducted a non-lethal attack, or simply walked away. They also could have pretended to be a police officer. So they could have said that they were the police, they were there checking something out, and just walked away, and they would not have been pursued. Missy would not have thought to tackle them or something. The police outfit could have served another purpose. It may have been to counter Missy's physical advantage, like to prevent her from running away, like maybe the person was wearing it to gain her compliance. Now moving to the second theory. This theory says that this was a burglary gone bad. Missy surprised the burglar, and the individual killed her. So really, Missy was in the wrong place at the wrong time. There is some evidence that supports this theory. The suspect doesn't appear to be excited or nervous. Their demeanor is very calm. One would think that they would be a little more anxious about an upcoming homicide. They don't seem to be acting goal-oriented, more like they are just wandering around, although this could be used to support the first theory as well. The choice of murder weapon is unusual. Killing somebody with a hammer is difficult, even when attacking by surprise. Missy was physically fit. If this was a planned homicide, wouldn't the killer have wanted to use a ranged weapon or a more lethal weapon? Other than the infidelity, there's no real motive for anyone to kill Missy. It seems unusual to target her for this homicide. Anybody who would have benefited financially from her death was ruled out as a suspect. Weighing everything, what do I think happened here? I think that theory number one, Missy was targeted, is slightly more likely than theory number two, this was a random attack. I would go something like a 60% probability with theory number one and a 40% with theory number two. What about the question regarding the sex of the suspect? Weighing all the evidence, like how the suspect was walking, what they look like, the shape of their body, their height, here's what I think. If Missy was targeted, I think the suspect was a woman, perhaps trying to get revenge due to Missy's infidelity. If this was a random attack, then I think it was a man. It's much more likely that the perpetrator of this type of burglary would be male. Therefore, I think it is slightly more likely the suspect was a woman, because I think theory number one was more likely. What lessons can we learn in this case? First lesson, Missy Beavers left her gun in her car. She had a license to carry it. She could have brought it with her. A firearm doesn't do much good if it's not available to the person when they need it. Second lesson, when walking in a dark building early in the morning, it's not a good idea to go in alone. Missy could have waited until the first students arrived. They probably would have been happy to walk in with her. Third lesson, it's amazing how much energy in the investigation is focused on the sex of the suspect and their gait. Whether the suspect intended to or not, they were able to set the narrative of the investigation. It makes me wonder why more criminals don't throw the police off the trail by introducing extra evidence into a case, probably because many crimes are not well planned or planned at all. But it's frightening how easy the suspect was able to do this. If in reality they do not have a limp, they're probably never going to be arrested. Their sex is unknown, their true height is unknown, their body shape is unknown, their face was never seen. I think this is a case that leaves us with two ideas. Either this is a master criminal who planned this murder carefully, like they're on some type of perfect murder mission, or this is a very lucky burglar who managed to escape after committing an unplanned homicide. It's puzzling that a crime where the suspect is captured on video has never been solved. 
Those are my thoughts in the case of Missy Beavers. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. I hope that you found my analysis more compelling than Paul Blart, Mall Cop. Thanks for watching.